Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the general structure of the spinal cord and the roots that come off of it, in particular with an emphasis on this autonomic part over here, which is going to involve a white ramus communicans, a gray ramus communicans, and then the sympathetic chain ganglion. All right, so hopefully you have a general understanding of the anatomy of the spinal cord. Notice off of each side of the spinal cord, so it'd be on this side and also this side over here, we have these rootlets that come off of it. Okay, so posteriorly, so up here, we have dorsal rootlets. Down here anteriorly, we have ventral rootlets. And notice that in each case, those rootlets essentially fuse into a root. So the dorsal rootlets right here, they all fuse into the dorsal root, which is sometimes also called the posterior root. And then the ventral rootlets fuse into the ventral root, sometimes called the anterior root. Now, notice that the dorsal root also has this engorgement right here called the dorsal root ganglion. This is going to contain the cell bodies of sensory neurons that are coming back to the spinal cord. So for example, if we have cell bodies right here of these sensory neurons, then their axons would project into the dorsal root and then into various dorsal rootlets to reach the spinal cord. In other words, the dorsal side of the spinal cord, in particular the rootlets in the root and the dorsal root ganglion, this is all sensory right here. Okay? It's all sensory up until the dorsal root fuses with the ventral root and becomes the spinal nerve. So for my mouse right here, all the way to the rootlets, that's all sensory and afferent. It's bringing information to the spinal cord. Now for the ventral rootlets, this is motor. So this is going to involve axons moving out of the spinal cord, ultimately toward the spinal nerve. And so we have these ventral rootlets. They fuse into a ventral root. But notice that the ventral side, or anterior side, does not have this engorgement right here. The the ganglion is only on the dorsal side, okay? But in any case, the dorsal root with its ganglion fuses with the ventral root and they become the spinal nerve, okay? So the spinal nerve is a mixed component because it contains both sensory neurons coming back to the nervous system, so they're coming back and they go through the dorsal side, and it contains motor axons that are going toward the spinal nerve and out toward the periphery. So the spinal nerve is mixed, and it's a fusion of the dorsal root and the ventral root. Now, as you go away from the spinal cord, dorsal root, ventral root fuse into a spinal nerve, but then the spinal nerve bifurcates into two rami. Now, the smaller dorsal ramus, generally speaking, is going to be providing motor axons that are going to innervate muscles of the back and the neck, really the posterior neck. So, for example, your erector spiny muscle group in your back, it's a deep back muscle, those muscles are innervated by motor neurons coming out of the dorsal ramus. And then secondly, the dorsal ramus is also going to be receiving sensory information, so cutaneous sensory information, also from the back region. So really, this is all back. It's bringing those sensory axons from the back, ultimately back to the CNS, and then it's taking those motor axons from the CNS and giving them to the back for innervation of those back muscles. Ventral ramus pretty much does everything else, and what's also important to know about the ventral ramus is that the motor axons that go through here form plexuses. So for example, the cervical, brachial, and lumbosacral plexuses are formed by contributions from ventral rami, not the dorsal. Okay? Now, that's just a little bit of review here. What we're focusing on mainly are the autonomic neurons. Now, autonomic motor neurons are going to come out on the ventral side of the spinal cord. We'll look at a picture of this in a minute. And so the autonomic motor neurons come out of the spinal cord through the ventral rootlets, through the ventral root, and then they go into the spinal nerve. And let's suppose that these autonomic motor neurons need to get to the sympathetic chain ganglion right here. So in that respect, we'd be talking specifically about the sympathetic nervous system. So you have here these communications between the spinal nerve right here and the sympathetic chain ganglion at the same level of the spinal cord. 
And the difference between these is the white ramus communicans, which I have here in black, just so I can show this writing in white. This white ramus communicans is really a channel to bring neurons from the spinal nerve to the sympathetic chain ganglion. So they go in that direction. The gray ramus communicans right here goes the opposite direction. It brings neurons from the sympathetic chain ganglion back to the spinal nerve. And there's reasons why you would do that. And for example, we have this situation right here. What if we need to get sympathetic innervation from the central nervous system to something in the skin region, really the, the superficial periphery? So this could be blood vessels in the skin. So we need to get sympathetic innervation to those. And we're gonna follow this pathway right here and hopefully get an understanding of this. So we have here a presynaptic neuron in blue and a postsynaptic neuron in red. So in blue right here, this is our presynaptic neuron. Notice its cell body exists in the ventral gray horn of the spinal cord. So here's the posterior or dorsal gray horn. Here's the anterior or ventral gray horn. So right here, kind of in the middle, this would be the lateral gray horn. Here's its cell body and its axon projects through the rootlets into the ventral root. And then it goes into the spinal nerve. But it doesn't simply just go out the ventral ramus. Instead, it's actually going to go into the sympathetic chain ganglion. Now, when it does this, it has to travel through the white ramus communicans. Okay, so our presynaptic neuron goes a little bit into the spinal nerve, but then it goes through the white ramus communicans into the sympathetic chain ganglion. Now, our postsynaptic neuron is in red. So here, this right here where my mouse is, that is the cell body. That is the cell body of our postsynaptic neuron. So notice in the sympathetic chain ganglion, our presynaptic neuron is synapsing with the cell body of our postsynaptic neuron. Well, then the axon of that postsynaptic neuron in red projects out the gray ramus communicans back to the spinal nerve, and then it goes out the ventral ramus to the skin, basically just to supply blood vessels in that peripheral area. Okay, now this is different than what we see for a normal motor neuron that's going to a skeletal muscle. If, we, if that was the case, we'd have the cell body in the anterior gray horn. It would still go through the ventral rootlets, ventral root, into the spinal nerve, but then it would go directly through the ventral ramus, and then it would go to the muscle. Okay? When we have this sympathetic situation, the presynaptic neuron enters into this loop through the white ramus communicans, and then it synapses with the postsynaptic neuron in the sympathetic chain ganglion, whose axon then goes back through the gray ramus communicans, back into the spinal nerve, and through the ventral ramus out to whatever it's innervating. So that's something just weird that we see in the sympathetic nervous system for some things. It's not for everything, but we do have this loop here that seems kind of redundant. But again, this is because we have this postsynaptic neuron here whose cell body is in that sympathetic chain ganglion. All right. So one of the big picture items here before we conclude this video is make sure you understand the function of these two rami communicants, okay? or sometimes communicantes is plural. The white ramus communicans is a channel for the presynaptic neuron to get into the sympathetic chain ganglion, whereas the gray ramus communicans is a channel to get the axon from the postsynaptic neuron from the sympathetic chain ganglion back into the spinal nerve. So hopefully that makes sense to you, and hopefully you understand now a little bit more about the structure of the sympathetic nervous system whereby you need to innervate, let's say, blood vessels in the periphery like the skin. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.